Hello, welcome my crypto brothers and sisters. Welcome to another Money Monday training. Today's training covers part four of how to pick quality cryptocurrencies using fundamental analysis. Part four is about the financial metrics of a crypto token. If you missed parts one, two, and three, you can find them in the guide section of the Facebook group. Here's a quick reminder of all the four parts that I've covered in this training series. The first one is macroeconomics. Part two was project metrics. Part three was blockchain metrics. And part four is financial metrics. Okay, let's get started. This fourth group of fundamental analysis factors and now analyzes a cryptocurrency's economics. While this may sound similar to tokenomics, the economic factors covered are very different. We call it financial metrics. This metric is quantitative, so it's fairly easy to find the data. And here's what you want to look for. Market capital capitalization, liquidity, trading volume, and total value locked. Now the question is, where do we find this information when you need it? Let's go through this list and get details, get into the details of each one. Keep in mind that you're looking for red flags when doing research. Too many red flags means you might not want to invest in a, this particular token. The first metric is market capital, capitalization. It's hard to say that word. <laughs> this metric is useful for comparing the total value of various cryptocurrencies. It allows you to compare the total value of one crypto with the total value of another crypto. This data is helpful when making investment decisions. However, one thing to keep in mind is that the market cap for cryptocurrencies can change dramatically due to their price volatility. So why does market cap matter? It provides a gauge for how stable a crypto asset is. The larger the market cap for a particular crypto, the more stable a crypto investment it might be. So how do you calculate market cap? You multiply the total number of mined crypto coins by the price of that crypto coin. And let's look at Bitcoin as an example. You can use coinmarketcap.com to find Bitcoin's total coins in circulation. It's also known as circulating supply and its price. The market cap formula is then, here's what the current circulating supply of Bitcoin is, 19,201,081 times its current price, the last time I checked, was 20,560. That equals the um, market cap of 394 trillion seven hundred seventy four million two hundred twenty five thousand three hundred sixty yeah that's a mouthful it's a bunch of numbers so you do that formula and you'll come up with the total market cap and that number the market cap is used in many places other than just determining what the total market cap is we'll talk more about that in a little bit so that's market capitalization so the next metric we're going to look at is called liquidity which measures how easily you can buy and sell a crypto asset. If you want to buy a particular crypto, then there has to be a seller that wants to sell to you. If there are no sellers, then we say that that crypto is illiquid. Similarly, if you wish to sell a crypto and there are no buyers, we again state that the crypto is illiquid. Simply put, you want to invest in liquid cryptocurrencies because liquid assets assure you a fair price. Illiquid assets might experience high slippage or a wide bid ask spread causing you to pay a higher price. One of the most common indicators of liquidity is trading volume. So that takes us to the next metric, which is let's look at trading volume. And trading volume refers to the number of coins traded in a single market during a given period. Greater trading volume equals to more trading activity, buying and selling, and therefore a liquid market. There are three types of trading volume to, to look at as a crypto investor. The first one is the total trading volume of a particular crypto coin. This refers to the total trading volume across all exchanges, whether centralized or decentralized exchanges, and gauges the market liquidity of that particular crypto coin. And I've got a screenshot that shows you what this looks like on CoinMarketCap. Let's 
Let's see if I can get that centered a little bit more. No, I don't think I can. Anyway, so this is a screenshot from CoinMarketCap, and it shows you in the far right column the volume of for the Ethereum markets on these particular exchanges. So the next one, let's look at the total trading volume of an exchange, of one exchange. This is So the first one we looked at was the total market, the total trading volume of the crypto coin across all markets. Well, this particular one that we're looking at is across centralized exchanges. If you look at the top here, you can see that there's a, a tab for centralized exchange and decentralized exchange. And I'm just looking at the centralized exchanges and I just picked the top three um, exchanges in the central exchange world. Let's look at the next one, the total trading volume of one particular exchange. This metric refers to the total trading volume of all crypto coins within one exchange. It is used to measure the liquidity of that exchange. An exchange with higher liquidity is usually a more reliable platform for trading. More market participants and trading activity means more volume and therefore more liquidity. And here's a screenshot, again from CoinMarketCap, that shows the trading volume for each individual exchange. And I just happen to have a screenshot of just the top five. And you can see that they vary greatly. Binance has huge volume. FTX has decent volume. Kraken has lower volume. So, you know, one thing I like about coin market cap is the exchange score because I, I when I was doing this, uh, putting this training together, I noticed that there were exchanges with much higher volume, but with very low exchange scores, which means I wouldn't necessarily trust using them. The third trading volume is of a particular pair. And this metric refers to the volume associated with, like I said, one single trading pair. A single crypto coin can have, of course, multiple trading pairs. For example, you could have Bitcoin trading against US dollars, Bitcoin trading with USDC, Bitcoin trading with USDT, and many, many other pairs. So we use this metric to gauge the liquidity of a particular trading pair. The bottom line for all these volume metrics that we've just looked at is that the more volume, the better. So here, again, we're going to look at another screenshot I took from CoinMarketCap. And the top one is looking at Binance and specifically the pair BTC and USDT. And it shows you the volume for that pair, shows you the volume for BTC BUSD. And there's a few others there to look at. So there's a lot of different kinds of volume to look at. That's the main thing I want you to get from this section of financial metrics. And it's worth looking at all of them to determine um, the quality of the exchange, the quality of the pair, et cetera. The last metric we're gonna explore in today's training is total value locked, and that only applies to proof of stake blockchains. TVL has become the most common metric used to determine the growth and health of the decentralized finance industry. The TVL in cryptocurrencies represents the sum of all crypto assets staked or locked into smart contracts for a specific smart contract protocol. When compared to market cap, the theory is that TVL shows whether a crypto asset is overvalued or undervalued. There's really a lot more to know about total value locked, but in this training, I'm just giving you an introduction to the topic. But let's look at one example. Let's look at the calculation for TVL for Uniswap. So the market cap TVL ratio is calculated. I put the price up there. It's not part of the calculation, but I just put the price up there so you'd know what it currently is. You take, you gotta find the market cap and the total value locked. And then from there, you can calculate the market cap TVL ratio. Now you can do the math if you want, or you can just go to coin market cap and they actually provide you all of these numbers, including the market cap TVL ratio. So a ratio of more than one means that the crypto asset is overvalued, could be overpriced. A ratio less than one indicates that the crypto asset is undervalued, could be that the price is low and it could be a good time to consider buying if you're interested in that particular crypto. So in summary, 
I know, uh, as you may have noticed, there is a lot to unpack with fundamental analysis. Doing a complete fundamental analysis of a crypto asset is a great deal of work, but the time spent can be well worth it. Knowing about the, fun the financial metrics of a crypto project's token can help you decide whether to buy or bypass that particular coin. So where do you find the financial metric data? Well, here's a list of three, uh, fr three free sources. I've used all three of them. CoinMarketCap is the one that I talked about a lot in today's training. CoinGecko is another great free service and Coin360.com is another one. So that's it for today's training. If you enjoyed the content, please put a one in the comments and share your thoughts. And also, if you have a topic that you'd like covered in one of our live trainings, just let me know in the comments section and I'll do my best to put together a training on that topic. So I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.